Hello. Thank you. Thank you for all attending the Lynx Silverline Round Two Live Virtual Public Meeting. I'm Andy Mock with CATS. I'm the Senior Project Manager for the Lynx Silverline. The Lynx Silverline is a transformational light rail project that spans from Belmont through the city of Charlotte and into Matthews with a potential extension into Union County. Because the project is so large, we are broken up into six separate focus areas. And each focus area has a meeting dedicated to it. Tonight's meeting is about the focus area number one, which spans from Belmont to I-45 near the airport. It's critical that we receive your input on the options being discussed so that the design team has the benefit of, of that input as we evaluate the different lines. As I mentioned earlier, each focus area has its own meeting, so feel free to attend other meetings to receive additional information about other parts of the corridor. I would also recommend visiting our website at www.ridetransit.org slash linksilverline to follow along tonight and to find out, about more, find out more information about the other public engagement opportunities. So just a couple notes uh, for uh, the virtual meeting experience tonight. Uh, uh, please, all panelists, please remain on mute until the Q&A portion of the meeting. Uh, for all participants, please log into your Gmail or your YouTube account to participate in the Q&A session live. And for best exper quality experience, please log off any organizational VPNs. Post your questions in the chat box and we'll be evaluating that as we go forward. Regarding the agenda for tonight, we're gonna to provide a, a brief overview video showing uh, some history and showing what we've been up to and what we're gonna talk about tonight. There'll be a focus area presentation, which will give a, a live uh, demonstration of the website and the online open house and some uh, details about the focus area one within Belmont to I-485. And then we'll do a live Q&A, which will be facilitated through the YouTube chat function. Now we're gonna pet, pet, go through a, an online uh, video that shows an overview of the project. Hello, I'm Andy Mock, the Link Silverline Senior Project Manager. This video is the first in a series of videos and will provide an overview of the proposed Link Silverline Lightroom project. We are currently in the transportation planning or pre-project development phase of work, and we are conducting early scoping in coordination with the Federal Transit Administration, referred to as FTA. We will discuss more about early scoping later on, as well as provide you with an update on progress since March of 2020, and explain how you can provide input. I'd like to introduce you to our project team. First, leading the Link Serverline Light Rail project is myself, and Jenna Nichols, the Deputy Project Manager. Ashanel Poole is the CATS Public and Community Relations Specialist dedicated to the project. The Link Silverline Light Rail is part of a larger community program which includes related but separate studies. The Transoriented Development Study, referred to as TOD, as well as a rail trail study. John Howard is the Project Manager for the TOD study, and Jason Lawrence is the Project Manager for the rail trail project study. There will be more to come on the TOD and rail trail planning in the future, but today, as a part of early scoping, we are focused on the light rail project. Now that you've met the team, let's talk about the actual Link Silverline light rail project. The Link Silverline is a proposed 26 mile light rail project from the city of Belmont through Center City, Charlotte, and the town of Matthews with a potential extension into Union County. We are growing as a region, and coordination is key. Throughout the project, we will coordinate efforts with several other programs, agencies, and projects. Currently, CATS and FTA are conducting early scoping. Yes, we recognize it's a very technical term, but essentially it means that we are seeking your feedback on the ongoing planning analysis to better define the project before entering project development in the National Environmental Policy Act, referred to as NEPA. Let's talk about how we got to this point. Rapid Transit has been discussed in Charlotte for decades. In 1998, the City of Charlotte prepared the 2025 Integrated Transit Land Use Plan, which proposed using rapid transit to support focusing future growth in Charlotte's key centers and corridors. The West Corridor along Wilkinson Boulevard and the Southeast Corridor along Independence Boulevard were two of the identified corridors. Additional planning efforts have occurred 
and the plan is now referred to as the 2030 Transit System Plan. In 2016, CATS completed the Southeast Corridor Transit Study, which considered various transit technologies and alignments. The study included a detailed technical evaluation and extensive public and stakeholder engagement. Our policy board, referred to as the Metropolitan Transit Commission, or MTC, adopted an LPA, short for Locally Preferred Alternative, for a light rail project in the 13-mile southeast corridor from Center City, Charlotte, to the Mecklenburg and Union County border. More recently, CATS completed the Link System Update, which studied various technologies and alignment alternatives for the West Corridor and Center City, Charlotte. In February 2019, the MTC adopted a light rail LPA for the West Corridor and combined it with the Southeast Corridor LPA to make one continuous 26-mile light rail corridor from Belmont to Matthews, with a potential extension into Union County, known as the Link Silver Line. Now we are assessing new opportunities and risks in order to refine the LPA and help determine the alignment and options that may be carried forward into environmental review under NEPA. During the early scoping process, we start to develop the purpose and need statement, which is consistent with previously identified public and stakeholder goals. The purpose and need statement defines the fundamental reason why the project is being proposed and it's the foundation for the environmental review process. The needs are the why the proposed action is needed, and the purpose is the what CATS intends to accomplish. The purpose and need will be refined during planning and through environmental review, with additional input from the public, stakeholders, and regulatory agencies. This screen shows identified preliminary transportation needs in the Link Silver Line Corridor. The preliminary purpose of the Link Silver Line project is to provide high capacity transit service and dedicated right of way along identified roadways that address the desired transportation outcome shown on the screen. The full preliminary purpose and needs statement is available in the online open house. Let us know if you have any comments in the online survey, also available in the online open house. You may be asking yourself, why are we refining the alignment if it was adopted by the MTC, the CATS policy board? Although some of the alignment was adopted in 2019, the Southeast Corridor was adopted in 2016. Just think about how much of our infrastructure changed in the region over the last four years. In that time, a lot of construction has occurred. We opened the Lynx Blue Line extension and have learned so much that we can bring to this project. Additionally, we will be conducting additional engineering and environmental evaluations to learn more about the corridor and continue asking for your input. Now that you know why we are looking at refinements, Let's talk about the decision-making process. We want to maximize the benefits of the proposed project while minimizing the risks. We're evaluating many factors as we refine the LPA, again, the locally preferred alternative, including public input, design constraints, environmental considerations, a quality rider experience, coordination with other projects, and land use surrounding the potential stations. We have developed several alignment refinement options for your review. These options may enhance benefits or address risks associated with the LPA. However, the alignment options also have their own pros and cons, as described in the interactive comment map on the online open house. As referenced earlier, we have been and will continue to think about environmental resources as we refine the LPA and move into environmental review under NEPA. We are looking for your feedback on the environmental considerations that we have identified and whether there are more to consider. Overall, we're asking you to provide input on a number of critical factors. Since the corridor is quite long, at approximately 26 miles, we have broken it up into six focus areas. You can get more detailed information about the alignment options within each focus area by using the interactive comment map in the online open house. There are short videos that describe pros and cons of the alignment options for each focus area. Please review the videos at your convenience, available in the online open house from August 31st to October 14th. Once you review all the information, let us know what you think. There are a number of ways you can provide your input. Browse around the online open house to learn more about the project. Leave comments on the interactive comment map and take the public survey. We are hosting live virtual public meetings on September 15th, 16th, 17th, 22nd, 24th and 29th at 5.30 p.m. Each of these meetings will include this general project overview plus a more detailed discussion on one of the focus areas. Check the
project website, ridetransit.org slash linksilverline to learn more about how you can access the meetings and the focus areas that will be featured in each one. Additionally, you can request a virtual meeting with our team for your business or neighborhood group by contacting us via email at linksilverline at publicinput.com or the CATS customer service via phone at 704-336-RIDE. That's 704-336-7433. If you prefer to submit a hard copy of your comments, you can send a letter to CATS, care of Agenel Pool at 600 East 4th Street, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28202. Public comments must be submitted by October 14th as we will conclude the early scoping period. The feedback we receive from you will help us make decisions as we move into next steps. In 2021, the team plans to have a refined LPA that we will present for adoption by the MTC and carry forward into the detailed NEPA environmental review process. Prior to adoption by the MTC, we will conduct another round of public meetings to share our recommendations. Depending on the public and agency input, there may be more than one option in certain locations. Thank you for joining us today and thank you in advance for sharing your input with us. Your feedback will help to shape and create a light rail line that will serve our region for many generations to come. So I hope everyone was able to uh, hear and see that video uh, well and get an understanding of kind of some of the feedback and background that has taken us uh, to where we are today. Uh, so I'm going to take a couple minutes uh, from uh, the project to kind of orient folks because of this, because all of our round two engagement is all virtual and, and all of our website has been up and live since August 31st and will remain up and active receiving comments until October 14th. So I wanted to give a little a moment just to kind of orient folks uh, to our website and then how you get to the uh, online open house before we kind of get into the details so that folks can take a little time looking at this information and know how to get there. So what you're looking at right now is the, uh, the CATS website at ridetransit.org. And then if you go to the transit planning, Silver Line, that will take you to the main uh, Silver Line website under the, the CATS website. From there, you're gonna find a lot of good information, uh, high level information about the Silver Line where the project is in the in the process, a map, information about the other meetings that are coming up over the next couple of weeks, including dates and times for each one of the focus area meetings and the definition for what focus area is what. And that will be for all the meetings, focus area one through six, and then how you can sign up to get on our uh, mailing list or, or how you can stay in tune. This is the gateway to the online open house. So if you go back up to the top, you'll see a link for online open house. If you would click on that, that will take you to the main website where we are doing our public engagement. So this first page is the project overview. And this provides you with a uh, orientation to the silver line. If you don't know anything about the silver line, you've, you've never seen anything about it, this is a great place to start. There's a welcome video from uh, with John Lewis, our CEO, gives some opening comments. And I provide some uh, comments about how to perceive input and up, kind of a plug of our upcoming meetings that we're in the middle of. Um, again, kind of a general high level overview of the project and the focus areas a map, the map that we've been talking about of the focus areas, uh, a description of the, uh, of the public engagement through the early scoping, which began on August 31st and, and completed on October 14th. We talked a little bit about early scoping in the video, but that's really just kind of an optional uh, environmental step that is uh, that we're going through in consultation with our FTA partners of the Federal Transit Administration partners. If you'd like to watch that video again, that video is also on this website. That's a, maybe to refresh your memory. And there's also more of some detail that was we talked about in the video about the history for how we kind of got to where we are. All the plans that were done over the last 20 years 
that kind of led to the link silver line and the actual links to the actual documents. So if you'd like to get into the weeds and, and uh, really read about all this, then that information's on here. It's a good place uh, for you to get comfortable with the information. It's also some uh, write up of the purpose and need statement that we presented in the video. This the purpose and need really explains the why we're doing the silver line. This is a part and parcel of the environmental process which we're following uh, through the National Environmental Policy Act. Uh, so it, there's also an overview of the types of environmental impacts that we'll be evaluating. So there's a long list of all of the things that we'll be looking at once the project, once we've determined which elements of the project we're gonna proceed with, we'll evaluate all these things when we're looking through the project. And then a high level timeline as far as the process for how, where we are in the planning and pre-project development timeline or phase, and then kind of where we're going into the project development phase, which is more into the formal federal uh, process. So that's a good starting place for folks before you dig into the, the details, if you really want to understand kind of where we are and how we got here. The next tab is the Link Silver Line alignment options. And this is really the workhorse as far as the engagement process goes. Um, just to kind of give folks a little bit of an orientation to this process, uh, to this page in this tab. The main way to navigate this tab is on the right side where you see this, this link silver line alignment options and trade-offs. And we lead each one of these with a, folk, with a question and that is focus area one, Belmont to I-485. How will the link silver line connect to Belmont? So that's the kind of the question we're trying to answer. Now just to give folks a little bit of an orientation because there's lots of lines. If you would wanna go on and look at this uh, later, it's, it's available to you 24 hours a day to evaluate. Uh, so the purple line is always the locally preferred alternative. And now just to give a little reminder, the locally preferred alternative was adopted through the Metropolitan Transit Commission. It is the starting place for all of our evaluation and all of our studies. So a lot, if you see a yellow line, that's a design option to the locally preferred alternative. And many of those, and most of those come from some risk or uncertainty of the locally preferred alternative, something that we're not 100% clear about and that we think there's some concern about. So we're looking at an option or an opportunity that the locally preferred alternative didn't evaluate and we think is worth taking another look at. So when you go into this and I'll walk through some of these yellow lines uh, for focus area one, you'll kind of get a feeling for you know, why we've looked at a design option to the locally preferred alternative. So before I get into lines and details, uh, you know, we, we talk about the question, we talk about a narrative description for what exactly, what we think that line is, a way to kind of describe it in words. We then lay, talk, have the three options and there's a hot link. So if you were to click on this, it would highlight and give you some pros and cons and I'll do that for you in a moment. There's also a video uh, underneath each one of these, so focus area one. Uh, so if you would click on this, it would show you a video that would basically be the same information that I'm gonna provide to you live. Uh, so if you would wanna refresh your memory later or, or share this with a friend who wasn't able to attend the meeting, you could send them this link and they could watch this and get this very similar information that you're seeing tonight. Then there's a comment form. And this is very important because we really, uh, because we have design options to the locally preferred alternative, we're really trying to figure out which are we gonna go for with the, the locally preferred alternative into more of the, the detailed engineering and design, environmental and design process, or are we going to go with a design option? And so this comment form will allow us to receive a little input back from the community about which, what are the priorities of the community in this area? And there may be different areas may have different priorities. And so that's why we're asking this question for each one of the focus areas. So as you go down through here, we're asking for your, your, you know, your determination of which area is most important to you is travel time. If you know, travel time is the most important to you that the train is reliable and it runs from, you know, Belmont to uptown. If that's your goal, then that would be the place you click. You know, if connectivity, local connectivity is the priority, that would be there. You know, there's all kind of different trade-offs that we're trying to get to in these options and station layouts. 
And then there's a, of course, a public comment box where if you could make, you know, you make any sort of comment you'd like in this area. Uh, so now that we, you kind of see kind of how that lays out as far as this right line. And if you want to want to, you know, zoom to other focus areas, this gray bar over here is the way to kind of maneuver the, the website. And so if you click the down arrow, it would take you to focus area two, which would be at the airport. But uh, so back to focus area one, and let me just kind of zoom into the locally preferred alternative. And I'll start from uh, west to east in uh, downtown Belmont and end at I-45. So the locally preferred alternative terminates just inside of Park Street. And it is a side running light rail condition. If people are familiar with the uh, Lynx Blue Line uh, in certain areas, it's either in the median or it's on the side or it's on its own dedicated track space. Uh, in this situation, the locally preferred alternative uh, was on the northern side of Wilkinson Boulevard. And so it's, it comes along the northern side, it crosses several of these cross streets and driveways, and it doesn't require the reconstruction of Wilkinson Boulevard. It bridges over Wilkinson Boulevard, over, sorry, over the Catawba River parallel to the, the Catawba Bridge and then continues on on the northern side past these industrial uses. And then terminates right near the 485 line. That's where this zone terminates. It goes on to the airport. So you can see all these uses along this area. The light rail would then traverse right along the curbside past Sam Wilson, past Parrot Light Drive. And so when you look at the pros and cons, you click on that line, it highlights that locally preferred alternative and turns it cyan or, or blue and gives you some high level observations of that. And I'll talk through a couple of those. So our thought there is the pro of the locally preferred alternative or the, the good thing about it, one of them is it minimizes the need to reconstruct Wilkinson Boulevard. So we don't have to rebuild the road and that, that has a lot of less impact and cost. And so that's, that's a good thing. Um, and usually at our terminus stations, we usually have a parking garage or a parking lot for people to pick up folks who might wanna drive and get out, out of their vehicles at I-85 or, or along Wilkinson and they can park their vehicles and get on the train and, and go on to wherever they're going. Um, and so having a side running condition allows for this, the uh, platform to be directly adjacent to the parking, which just takes out some barriers for folks to get out of their vehicle and get into the train. And that's also a good thing. However, the, the negative of this alignment is that because we are crossing so many driveways and so many side streets, especially in this area here in Belmont and down near this industrial area, that it does, it will force us to reconstruct many driveways and reroute cross streets. And so we're gonna have to kind of rethink how access is gonna to work to some of these areas. And so that's a, that's a challenge. Now, the, because of that challenge the, that we identified early on is those uh, access impacts, we identified an alternative to that. And that is basically to run along the center of Wilkinson Boulevard. That's one of the options. You'll notice that some of the design options actually go beyond Park Street. So those are some different ideas that we've been kicking around. So I don't, I don't know that any of those are, are uh, you know, w oh, exclude each other, but uh, you know, it, it could go beyond Park Street. That's one of the things we're evaluating. But this option too really is to look at rebuilding Wilkinson Boulevard with light rail down the middle, very similar to uh, the Lynx Blue Line extension on North Tryon Street. So it would look very similar to that with light rail in the median with uh, travel lanes on either side. And it would require, you know, it would be a reconstruction of the road within, to incorporate light rail in. So, sorry to be panning around a bit. This, there you go. So the, the pro of that option is that it does maintain the side streets and driveway. So the downside of the first option, which is that 
construction impact and operational impact of the side streets and driveways would be uh, would be reduced. That impact would be reduced with this option because the light rail would be in the center. And so we would be able to maintain all those driveways and side streets. But it does require the complete reconstruction and widening of Wilkinson Boulevard. And, oh, sorry. And because we're in the median, it also requires us to bridge out of the median on either side of Wilkinson Boulevard to be on the northern side of the Wilkinson Boulevard bridge at, at the Catawba. So there is a cost impact and there's a visual impact of a flyover bridge coming from the median to the northern side and then back in. It would look something like the old Concord Road Bridge if people are familiar with uh, North Tryon Street for the Blue Line extension. Now, the other option in this area is, is the south side of Wilkinson Boulevard. And that's very similar on the Belmont side, but between I-485 and the Catawba River, the difference is the light rail on this option would then come over Wilkinson Boulevard from the airport and from 485, and then traverse along the southern side of Wilkinson Boulevard. And so the good thing about that is there was not as nearly as many driveways on the southern side as there was the northern side. So a lot of those uh, impacts that we saw on the northern side, as far as driveways and cross streets, many of those would be uh, improved because there would not be as many of those on the southern side. Uh, so that addresses some of that concern. However, because we have to then, we still have to get to the northern side to get over the Catawba River. We have to bridge, we would have to bridge from the southern side to the northern side here, right short of the river. So it would be a, a long bridge to go from the southern side to the northern side. And then once we get to the northern side at the Catawba River Bridge, we would then run along the northern side and the impacts would be very similar to that of locally preferred alternative because of all the driveways and side streets on the northern side. So uh, that's a brief overview of the options on currently on the table for the uh, focus area one. And I, I will kind of, let me also make a comment about stations uh, at this point, the, the stage, we have, we have several kind of potential stations on the table. One at, you know, Sam Wilson Road, Old Dowd Road, and then one near somewhere down near Park Street or over here, it would be one or the other between Park Street or potentially extending up here nor, near Caldwell Farm Road. So those are our current plan stations that we're evaluating. So with that, I might hand this back over to Ajanel to lead us through a Q&A. Thank you, Andy. Um, so we are gonna enter into our Q&A portion of the meeting. Um, I want to thank everyone who is participating virtually. Um, I understand that this is a bit new for everyone, um, but with the state that we're in right now, we're just trying to think best for public health um, and safety. So, um, so we are, if you're watching on YouTube, I want to make sure that you are uh, signed in via your Gmail or YouTube account. If you wanna ask questions, just leave them in the chat box and um, we will uh, feed them to our project team for them to answer. Um, just a note, um, if you, I encourage you to sign off of any uh, VPN or organizational servers. Um, and that will help you get uh, the best connection. So um, I'm gonna um, ask all the panelists to stay on mute until you are answering a question. Um, and we are gonna answer questions that we received um, during the session via the YouTube chat um, and also questions that we received prior um, via either phone, mail or email. Um, so to get us started, um, one question that we received is, why is the light rail not going directly to the airport? And I am going to direct this to our deputy project manager, Jenna. Um, Jenna, would you mind taking this one? I'd love to. Thank you, Ajana. Uh, it is definitely a great question and it's a popular one. Um, 
you know, you can imagine a project like the Silver Line is a multi-generational 50 to 100 plus year investment. So we need to make sure we keep that in mind as we design. And when we think about um, the Charlotte Airport of today, it's likely not the same as the Charlotte Airport of the future. Um, it will also continue to grow and expand. Uh, the Silver Line will have a premier light rail station at the airport that supports the airport's future land use and development plans. Um, the station will be designed so that passengers arriving by light rail will feel as if they've arrived directly at the airport terminal because it will be located um, or connected to an airport multimodal center that functions like an extension of the main terminal, which really means that it has terminal services such as baggage check and ticketing, all those kinds of things. Um, and then we'll just be able to hop on a people mover for a quick direct connection um, between the people mover and the terminal, so. Thank you, Jenna. Um, a second question that we received prior was, um, I know Andy went over the history, but um, how was this alignment chosen? Jenna, do you mind doing that one? Sure, um, I will take a stab at it and, and Jason Lawrence, who also has been involved throughout the process can fill in anything I've left out. Um, several studies have gotten us to this point and those date back to 1998 when the city of Charlotte prepared the original 2025 integrated transit land use plan, the West Corridor along Wilkinson Boulevard and the Southeast Corridor along Independence Boulevard uh, were two of the identified corridors for future rapid transit to support the future growth in Charlotte. Uh, the Silver Line makes up those, those two corridors make up the Silver Line. Uh, additional studies were then conducted between 2002 and 2006. Um, and ultimately the plan was updated to be called the 2030 transit system plan. Um, and then in 2016, CATS completed uh, the Southeast Corridor Transit Study and uh, the Metropolitan Transit Commission, MTC, our governing body, uh, approved the recommendation of a light rail, um, locally preferred alternative LPA, which Andy has shown you um, was that purple line on the map uh, he was showing you. And that was approved for the 13 mile corridor from Center City, Charlotte to Mecklenburg and Union County border. Uh, in 2019, CATS completed the Lynx system update, which studied the West corridor and Center City, Charlotte um, and then the MTC once again adopted the light rail locally preferred alternative for the West Corridor and then combined that with that locally preferred alternative for the Southeast Corridor. Um, and that formed one continuous 26 mile light rail corridor from Belmont all the way to Matthews, which is known as the Lynx Silver Line. Um, and then earlier this year, CATS began the process of refining that locally preferred alternative to determine the alignment and all of the options that may be carried forward into the National Environmental Policy or NEPA Environmental Review. JL, did I, did I leave anything out? Good. Thank you, Jenna. Um, so Mr. Shannon asked um, if there is any type of property um, or eminent property taken due to eminent domain, how will that work? Um, will they take a portion of the property or the whole thing? Um, and I'm gonna turn this one to Andy. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, so just to give a little bit of update uh, on process, we're very far from under having, understanding the footprint of the project and what the right of way uh, needs will be. Uh, and plus, so once we progress the design well enough to understand the footprint and the right of way needs, we'll also have to complete the environmental process to begin uh, acquiring right of way. So I just want to note that that we are very early on uh, and not ready to start acquiring property in, 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 in through this pro through this project. So how, how this will how it would work if you know flash forward a couple of years and let's we do complete the design and we do have we do understand what the, the, the needs of the project are and we have completed our environmental review. <clears throat> we would then approach each particular property owner with a, a proposal for the property that's needed for the project. And we would seek to reach a settlement with each property owner uh, 
to acquire the property necessary for the project. Uh, what that would be on any particular piece of property right now, like if you were to look at the map and try to surmise what that would be from, you know, at this point, at this early stage on any particular piece of property, it would be very, you know, un it'd be very unknown. We wouldn't be able to tell you specifically any particular property, how much property we would need. And we would, norm our normal process would also be, in general, we would usually only acquire what is necessary for the project and not just do full takes unless they were absolutely necessary. Thank you, Andy. Um, a follow-up question to that. Um, when designing the line, how much land do you anticipate or area around the alignment um, is necessary to build an alignment? That's what I was trying to say. I was trying to answer that one too. Uh, it, it's very hard to, to know what that would be. It, it depends. So many things. So the light, the line, you're just seeing the light rail alignment, but there'll be many other types of improvements that come with the project, such as road improvements and sidewalk improvements and grading and utilities. So it, it's very, I, I really can't give a general generalized number for what that would be uh, without really knowing a lot more details than I do. Thank you. We have a couple questions from the YouTube chat. What is this going to do to the traffic congestion in Belmont area while construction is going on? Um, and I'll turn it over to you, uh, Andy, unless you want to hand it off to someone else. I mean, I'll, I'll take a stab at it and I'll pass it off to anyone else who'd like to jump on. It kind of depends on the option uh, that we select. So, you know, for the, the options that are more outside of the right of way. So there's, you know, at least in theory, the the right the traffic impacts would be less if light rail runs in the median then there would be an areas where there's not a grade separation or a bridge going over a, a median and just for example I, I our working assumption is that we would be you know at least in a starting place be bridging over park street if we if we actually cross park street because we do recognize that, that there are some significant traffic issues there but any area where there's uh you know a crossing that's at grade there would be you know, gates and, and bells, just similar to the blue line. So uh, it kind of depends on the option that we select. Um, and that option, if we're did, if we're completely outside of the road right away on our own guideway and bridging over the, sh the major streets, then the impacts should not be that, that bad from light rail. Uh, at least light rail should not uh, make it worse or much worse. Um, so I don't know if anyone else wants to jump in on that. All right, thank you. Another question, have you looked at connecting the Link Silver Line in Belmont to the Piedmont and North Rail, Northern Railway for a single track light rail service to Gastonia and Mount Holly? And I'm gonna give this over to Jason Lawrence. Uh, thank you, thank you, Aunt Janelle. Uh, I'll briefly uh, mention that uh, we are undertaking a joint effort with the Central Line Regional Council in a regional transit plan called Connect Beyond. It was in the video that Andy mentioned. And CATS is, is coordinating with that 12 county, two state area. And a part of that is looking at the connections uh, outside of Mecklenburg County and outside of the, the adopt, currently adopted plans of the 20 transit system plan. So any kind of connections to, to downtown Gastonia or any of the jurisdictions along the, the 74 corridor would be a part of that effort. And if you go to connect-beyond.com right now, you can look at some of the initial ideas that we have for looking at high capacity transit corridors and commuter rail as a part of that effort. Uh, we will be uh, wrapping up that study by the end of next year and we'll be coordinating with the Link Silver Line efforts. Thank you, Jason. Um, we have an NCDOT question. I think we have an NCDOT representative with us. Um, the question is, what is the NCDOT project number for the 74 bridge? Is it funded? Will it include transit and active transportation within the right of way? Um, so I believe we have someone from NCDOT on here if they would like to take that one. If not, we can come back to it if need be. Yes, this is Mark Stafford from Division 12, which has got Gaston County. So that STIP project number is B dash six zero five one 
and that's to replace the Catawba River Bridge to a six-lane structure that's also going to have 10-foot shared paths on the north and the south side. And right now in the STIP, that is for construction in the year 2023, and it is funded. Hope that answers the question. Thank you, Mark. Um, Jason, I have another question for you. Someone would like to know, will buses connect to the Silver Line like it did with the Blue Line? Absolutely. So as, as a part of the Lynx Silver Line effort, just like the Lynx Blue Line, the Lynx Blue Line extension, we will uh, conduct a, a, a bus rail integration effort to understand the types of uh, bus routes that need to connect at each station, what, what kind of bus facilities should be at those stations, and ultimately, how to connect uh, systems beyond CATS, you know, systems in Union County and systems in Gaston County. So yes, the, the, to answer the question, there will be bus connections at uh, each of the stations along the Lincoln Silver Line. One more question, Jason. Um, since you talked about the regional transit plan, the question is what is the investment from Gaston County? And if you wanna pass this off to someone else, um, let me know. Uh, it's, a, it's a great question. So we're very early in this, uh, the regional transit effort. Also on the call today is uh, Jason Wager. He's the project manager from, from Central Line, uh, leading the Connect Beyond effort, our partner on this. And uh, as far as the types of corridors and the investment, that is part of the analysis that we're doing now is to determine where is the high capacity transit corridors that were light rail transit, bus rapid transit, and commuter rail could potentially be a part of a broader regional uh, transit network. And I don't know if Jason wants to talk about our process uh, for that as well. Uh, yeah, thank you, JL. I think you've covered it pretty well. Uh, all the MPOs in a 12 county region, uh, both in North and South Carolina, so four MPOs and one rural planning organization or RPO are all involved. Uh, we're talking about uh, over 5,000 square miles and about 2.6 million people and trying to weave together across several different transit agencies and uh, counties and jurisdictions. Uh, you know, what does that regional vision look like? And, and right now it's, it's fairly wide open. Uh, we want to get as aspirational as possible and be bold in that vision and hear from folks what uh, they'd like to see uh, kind of uh, as you mentioned, uh, the interactive map that's on the Connect Beyond, so www.connect-beyond.com. If you scroll down on the home page, you'll see an interactive map and be able to provide comments uh, related to what you might want to see in terms of uh, high capacity transit corridors. But certainly over this 18 month process, which kicked off in March, so we'll be going for another year uh, from, from now. Uh, we'll have conversations around uh, integrated bus services and, and kind of everything in between to look at that holistic uh, mobility network. Thank you, Jason and Jason. Um, this actually might be another question for you too um, or someone from NCDOT, but the question is, will another bridge project be considered for crossing the Catawba River? This is Mark Stafford from uh, Division 12 again. Right now in our the NCDOT STIPS transportation plan, there are no other projects for uh, transportation bridge projects for crossing over the Catawba River. Uh, there is a feasibility study that is ongoing that in the near future is gonna have some public involvement for a Catawba crossing, um, which is uh, south of 74. However, that feasibility study is just now getting underway and that public comment period is going to be coming up in the next few months. Thank you, Mark. Um, we actually have a TOD question and we have um, John Howard with us who is um, leading the TOD study. Um, the question is, where would possible TOD zoning boundaries be? I believe that's north and south of Wilkinson. Yeah, thanks, Anjanelle. So as Andy mentioned in this presentation early on, there are two parallel uh, studies associated with the Silver Line. And one is a transit-oriented development study. 
And uh, with that, we'll look at basically a half mile radius around each station area. Um, and all station areas are different. Uh, some are more established um, in older neighborhoods. Uh, some could be more suburban and newer. Uh, some could be a mix of both. Um, and as we refine and finalize the alignment, uh, we'll be going back out uh, in the spring approximately of 2021 and meeting with communities about the different station areas and uh, talking with uh, you all about land uses and uh, existing conditions and future conditions that are, are favorable for uh, development around this, a station. Uh, they're not all the same. Uh, some will have very unique land uses and historic properties and structures. So we'll do a deeper dive into that um, early next year. Thank you, John. Um, we have another question about the airport connection. Um, I think Eugene, you might be the best one to answer this one. Um, but someone would like to know how close to the airport is the station for um, Charlotte going to be? Will it be reasonable for a senior citizen to take their carry-on bag and luggage for check-in? Is it close enough if the bus has a problem to walk and walk to check-in? Might the airport consider a train connection to that station? And, um, this actually might be a better question for Jennifer Thompson, uh, my teammate. Good evening. Thanks. Um, the train station, as it's currently, the station as it's currently plotted, is approximately one mile from the terminal. Um, and as Jenna indicated, we really place a high value on the customer experience, as does CATS. Um, and so there will be some sort of connection. Um, it, the, the technology we're not certain of at this point. It could be a train, it could be a driverless shuttle, it could be bus service, um, but there will be a dedicated uh, people mover that will get folks from the, the station, the Silver Line station into the terminal. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, Andy, I think this would be a good question for you. Um, KB asked, why would you need to switch from the south side to the north side when crossing over to Belmont? Yeah, that's a great question. So a couple, a couple of things going on with that area. So we've been coordinating with the NCDOT bridge project as they've as the DOT project is kind of la laid out. They're kind of building kind of in the same sort of place. On the southern side, there's a couple parks and so we really want to stay away from the parks, as does NCDOT, with with impact to the parkland. So it makes sense for us to kind of avoid the parks on the southern side uh, and be on the northern side, kind of on a separate bridge. We did consider trying to integrate uh, the light rail onto the NCDOT bridge. That coordination is, is very challenging to fit those different kinds of. Uh, technologies with on the same bridge structure, also with uh, kind of uncertainties on both projects. So when when each one is going forward and funding options, it just didn't kind of work out. So it makes kind of more sense from a project progression to just go ahead and build the the light rail bridge on a separate structure on the northern side. Thank you, Andy. Um, another follow-up question, if it ran down the center, how many bridges would, need, would be needed to build the cross streets, excuse me, to build four cross streets like Sam Wilson, Catawba Street, Park Street, et cetera? Yeah, I, I think you'd have, uh, so if we ran down the center as we kind of currently envision it, you know, we, you would enter into the median down near I-485. So we would bridge into the median I don't believe under the current configuration that we would cross Sam Wilson on a bridge. I think we would cross that at grade. We would bridge out of the median near the Catawba, then bridge back in after the Catawba. And then if we cross park, we would likely build a bridge over park. That's kind of, there's a little speculation there. We're not 100% sure what the future of that intersection is gonna be, but I think we acknowledge and recognize that there are certainly some traffic concerns in that area. We wouldn't wanna you know, get into a situation where we're making it worse and or having the light rail to be impacted by uh, surrounding traffic. So it looks, sounds like there would be somewhere around three to four bridges that we would, if we were in the median. Thank you, Andy. Another uh, engineering type question. 
Um, Wilkinson Boulevard is very hilly out there. What is the maximum gradient the train can climb? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, so, uh, so our maximum and maximum allowed is close to 6%. Uh, we don't usually do 6%, so we would try to do less than 6%. We feel like uh, all the all the bridges or all the slopes that are out there today, we think we can handle uh, as it re relates to to grade, but uh, our our top max is six. Thank you. Um, another question: When is the project? When excuse me? When is the projected start date? Also, the aesthetics of the bridge. What will that look like? And what controls will there be on the lake in control of impacts on the lake, such as sediment buildup? Hmm, that's a lot of questions in there. <laughs> so, so I can answer, I, I'll answer what, what I can, and I, I certainly am not expert enough on sediment buildup to answer that one. Uh, re related to um, the bridges, we would, uh, you know, we would seek to do an aesthetic treatment similar to what we did on the Blue Line Extension. That would be our, our, a beginning place, we would certainly, we value aesthetics on our infrastructure as we can be demonstrated with the Lynx Blue Line extension. Uh, I don't, I, what was the first question, Ajnel? Sorry, I, I think I missed that one. No problem. Um, the projected start date. Oh, oh the, op the opening date? Of the, pro uh, it's just the, the projected start date. Okay. So, yeah, so, so the, the vision right now is that this is part of the 2030 plan. So, uh, you know, the goal is to be in that in that general timeline. I mean, it's a very big project and it's a very complex project. And so, as I've been saying, is that there's a lot of decisions between now and then will drive the actual, the actual opening date. So it's, it's, it's kind of a hard, it's kind of hard to foresee that far on a project this, this big and complex. And, and I, I, I don't know, I don't know who to pitch the sediment question to. Does anyone have any suggestions? And that might be something that we can follow up with. Um, yeah, after. yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll follow up on that one. I have another uh, TLD question for John. Um, does the old Dowd stop attached only to option two and three or would it be an option no matter what? So, and uh, John Howard or Andy, if you guys wanna take that one. Oh, that sounds like a John question. Um, I, I think, yeah, I think it could be, <laughs> or it could be both. Um, I, I think when we start looking at the uh, station area planning after the alignment is, is adopted, I think we'll, we'll evaluate that at that point in time. Uh, right now, I, I couldn't say for sure uh, which of those options would be, uh, would be applicable. Um, that will have to be looked at a little bit further uh, as we get into the station area planning next year. Thank you, John. So we have time for just a couple more questions. Um, I believe this one would be a good one for Jason Lawrence. Um, the question was, how does the Silver Line impact the Atlanta to Charlotte passenger rail corridor investment plan or vice versa? Sure, uh, and really in the context of what we're doing right now, it's coordinating with those kinds of efforts. And I will talk about the Charlotte Gateway Station because I think that's where the real interaction between those two projects, projects will come to play. Uh, the Charlotte Gateway Station is located in Uptown Charlotte, you know, the intersection of Trade and Graham. It's uh, phase one of that effort is currently under construction, which is improving the station tracks at that area so that the Amtrak, that station is currently located on North Tryon in Uptown Charlotte, can locate there. There's also a public-private development that will that will undertake over the couple of years to build a new train station, a new mixed-use development, and will accommodate space for the Link Silver Line and the high-speed rail between Charlotte and Atlanta. So to answer your question, the Silver Line project is coordinating with the high-speed rail project at Charlotte Gateway Station. And we are aware of that in the broader context in the regional transit plan. Thank you, Jason. Um, so we're gonna ask one last question. Um, we will, if you, um, there were a couple questions that we did not get to. So if you asked a question that did not get answered, um, we will post the responses on the website to those questions. So make sure you visit um, ridetransit.org slash link silverline. Um, 
And so the last question that we have is other than just the airport, well, where else is the train traveling to? Um, it's just going to the airport and back. So I think this is a good one for Andy just to kind of talk about the 26 mile corridor and right. the project. Yeah, so great, great question. So um, uh, the, the project actually goes from uh, Belmont and then it goes down uh, Wilkinson or adjacent to or in Wilkinson Boulevard in some way around Center City, Charlotte, and then out into Pence Boulevard to Matthews and Indian Trail. So there's a lot of really uh, important community resources along that 26 miles, including connections to the Blue Line, connections to Charlotte Gateway Station, uh, Bojangles and Ovens Arena, special events, Panthers games. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of connections available to the Link Silver Line over the 26 miles beyond just the airport. So I, I think we're at our time and I wanna thank everyone for, uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, and hopefully this was a, a good process. We worked really hard putting this together. So hopefully every, all the, the of our citizens and our, our customers and stakeholders, I uh, thought this was valuable and a good use of time. We will be writing up our comments or the comments and posting them and addressing the comments in some way. Uh, we will, so just again, kind of give some uh, reminders. So early scoping comment period ends on October 14th. So we, we please, please go through the uh, website that we showed to provide your comments. Um, and that is at www.ridetransit.org slash link silverline. Or you can also email your comments to uh, link silverline at publicinput.com. Call us at 704-336-RIDE. That's 704-336-7433. Or send us a letter uh, for, for, at CATS, care of Miss Aginal Pool. 600 East 4th Street, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28202. And so I, I guess I thank everyone for your time and focus tonight and your all your good comments. We appreciate your time and, and please stay tuned and stay involved in the Silver Line moving forward. Your, your input is critical in helping us make the right decisions moving forward. Thank you. <laughs>